At this point, if you haven't watched the video on the theory of RSA cryptography and how it relies on Euler's theorem, please go back and at least watch that video so you've got some idea where these numbers are coming from. We're going to do a simple numerical example here, and it relies on Alice picking two prime numbers, and she picks five and 11. What she then publicizes is the product of these. So she publicizes n equals 55. Obviously, in reality, a lot of people could look at 55 and figure out which two prime numbers it's the product of, five and 11. But the same argument would hold if this was a 100 digit, a 500 digit product of two primes. You would still, one person would know the two primes, multiply them together and make that large prime publicly known. They'd also need to make a public key known, which is a number E, which is co-prime with N. So everybody can know n equals 55, everybody can know e equals 3. But Alice, by knowing the two primes, p and q, can also work out phi of n. It's the product of two primes. So phi of n is phi of p times phi of q, which is p minus 1 times q minus 1, which in this case is 10 times 4 is 40. So only Alice knows that, and only Alice then can work out quickly the multiplicative inverse of 3 mod 40. Now in this case it's actually very easy to spot the multiplicative inverse, because 3 times 27 is 81, and 81 mod 40 is 1, because well, 81 is obviously 2 lots of 40, with a remainder of 1. In general, you might need to run the Euclidean algorithm in reverse to figure out what that multiplicative inverse is, but in this case, it's easy to spot. So if we think of our publicly available table, anybody can know that n is 55, anybody can know that e is three, but only Alice knows that p is five, q is 11, and only Alice knows that the multiplicative inverse of the value she's made publicly available equals 3 is 27 mod 40. Nobody else even knows we're talking about mod 40 because they don't know the prime factorization of n. Now, enter Bob. So Bob has got all of the publicly available information that... Alice has publicized that n is 55 and e equals 3. And he wants to send her the message m equal to 23. So to do this, he encodes that by calculating c, which is m to the e mod n. So he knows m. He's chosen that to be 23. That's his message. He knows Alice's public key E, and he knows the product of the two primes, which is um, N is 55. So he calculates 23 to the power of 3 mod 55 equal 12. And so just to check that, in fact, we could do a cubing without it blowing up. So 23 cubed is 12167. And in fact, that's 221 lots of 55 plus a remainder of 12. So Bob starts with the message M is 23. He doesn't want to send that message unencoded. So he uses the publicly available information. And he sends Alice the message C equals 12. In general, these um, might be a little bit harder to work out. The example I've picked here is probably by only having E equals 3 cubings a little bit easy to do, whereas obviously if it was a much larger E, 
it might we might have to do the trick of repeated squaring that we saw in one of the previous videos. So Bob then makes the encrypted message C is 12 public. So if I update the table of who knows what, everybody knows N is 55, E is 3, and now anybody can see the encoded message C is 12. Alice still knows the 2 primes 5 and 11, and she also knows the multiplicative inverse mod phi n, which is 27, which is 3 inverse mod 40. And what Bob knows is just his own message, unencoded, is 23. Once Alice receives Bob's coded message C, she knows that C to the D mod N should decode that, should give the original message of M. So she knows the C that Bob's told her. She knows the multiplicative inverse D that she's calculated. And everybody knows the publicly available product of two primes N. So in this case, Bob sent the coded message 12. So she can calculate 12 to the 27 mod 55. Now the trick here is that repeated squaring one that we saw in one of the previous videos on number theory and affine ciphers. But instead of doing a 27th power, I split the 27th power into the 16th power times the 8th power times the 2nd power times the 1st power. Notice the powers of 2, the repeated squaring trick. And I had this property that 12 to the 27 mod 55 would be 12 to the 16 mod 55 times 12 to the 8 mod 55 times 12 squared mod 55 times 12 mod 55, all mod 55. Now in this case, 12 to the 8 mod 55 is 1, and therefore any squared power of that, so a 16, 32nd, 64th, and so on power, would also be equivalent to 1. So equivalent to 1 in the multiplication, I can basically forget. And what I'm left with is that 12 to the 27 mod 55 is going to be the same as 12 squared mod 55 times 12 mod 55 mod 55. 12 squared is 144, 144 mod 55 is, well, two lots of 55 is 110, plus a remainder of 34. 34 times 12 is 408, 408 mod 55 gives a remainder of 23. So Alice has fairly quickly decoded Bob's message. He wanted to send 23, he encoded that as a 12, Alice got 12 and decoded it back to 23. The thing to note here is that any eavesdropper coming in could not do that. They couldn't do that quick calculation because they hadn't got this D equals 27. Only Alice knew that, and the way that she was able to work that out was that she knew the prime factorization of N. And without that, this whole process can't be done quickly. So the final table is that from that public information, Alice also knows, I could probably have added another one in the private Alice column and added now that Alice also knows that M is 23. The Bob's encoded message has arrived safely and Eve, the eavesdropper, couldn't possibly have figured out the message as quickly as Alice did.